Sunrise here is magical. It's beautiful here in the Mojave Desert, and it is something you just have to experience. It's all part of what you see when you come here to King of the Hammers. It's unlike any other major motorsports event I've ever been to. And behind us now, the fans are having a good time behind the fire, but still there's a cloud of dust, Pam Hall, hanging over. It's just all part of it, isn't it? It is, and the desert is absolutely beautiful. So let's see a little video again of the sunrise. where it starts to get a little bit warm here, right? Yes. Hi everybody, Ralph Shaheen with you. you. already met Pam Hall. We are here at King of the Hammers Speed Sport Live, brought to you by Cometic, as we've been bringing you coverage of this amazing event all week long here. Hope you're following along with us on all of our social media pages as we cover the events all around here. This course, some 80 plus miles out through the Mojave Desert. Part of what you do if you're racing here at King of the Hammers is behind the scenes there, unfortunately. Hey guys, I'm out of Chocolate Thunder right now. They've come off the desert, they've hit the rock sections. Well, one of the big things about coming to the rock section, it's all about line choice. You can't just look at the rock in front of you, you've got to look a couple Now on the set is a man who has found his way to the top step of the podium here today. Welcome to our show, Brian Deegan. Yeah. Congratulations, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been a great experience for sure. So that was winning the UTV Challenge race today, correct? Yeah, I think it was uh, the last kind of short course battle for 10 grand. And I, I came in, finished the race, the King of the Hammers, like UTV race. And, and uh, it was a, like very brutal, very challenging. And I just pulled in, they're like, okay, do you want to do the, uh, it was like, I forget what they call it, but it was. Uh, the grudge the match. What was it? Grudge match. The grudge match. Yeah, okay, the grudge match. I'm like, well, <laughs> how long do I got? They said like five minutes. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I said, well, where am I starting? They said up front. And then I was like, all right, I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll do it if I'm starting up front. And then, um, yeah, it was a fun little event at the end of the day. And it's cool to make short course in and like get it right in front of the fans and everything. And uh, man, it was a cool race. So I went out earlier today to an area called Chocolate Thunder, which is about three miles that way up a hill, and, or a mountain, I should say, watching the UTVs yeah. crawl up through there. And it's amazing to see the trucks come through, but it's incredible that the UTVs can basically accomplish the same thing. Yeah, the UTVs, for me, it started off when I raced off-road with Pro 2 and Pro 4. It's kind of the premier class, the big trucks, big horsepower. And um, UTVs came in, and I felt like when it first started, I'm like, okay, where are these going to go? And this is years ago. And, and they've developed so quick that it's an OEM. When OEMs go against each other, the, the level goes high. So quick. They, they
that go I like the sledge and, and and jack and all these gnarly trails i'm like i'm like are we really going up that like i didn't think we could and and it, by the end of the day i'm like okay now i get it like these things will go up almost anything yeah it's really yeah. amazing you yeah. definitely probably had one of the best navigators yeah, that yeah. you could have out here he knows it like the back of his hand it was a pretty amazing too i saw some uh, action on course today whenever <laughs> you guys uh, ran out of fuel yeah. How many miles were you to pit one? Ah, we were so close. And I feel like it was kind of uh, learning errors. Like when I first came to this race, I don't know what to expect and how to prepare. Um, but, you know, Kyle Chaney, I pitted with him. He's showing me the ropes, but he's obviously focused on winning. So I get it. I, I was just like studying it. We should have topped off the car when we took off the gate. We ran out of gas. Literally, we could see the pit, but we had to go up this big mountain to, to get to the pit. And we're probably a mile, mile and a half from the pit. And um, we ran out of gas, and I knew it right when we went up the hill. It was like, and it just shut off. I'm like, no way. <laughs> and, and we rolled back down. A lot of pre uh, preparation went into this for us. Like, I've been out here for days and days and days practicing because I want to respect the race and take it serious. And so we, um, anyway, he gets out of the car and just starts running. And he's like, runs like, to, like miles to the pit. And the, and, the, and the team gives him, like, not just here's a jug of gas, right? Here's like a Gatorade bottle or something. They give him the 10 gallon quick fill can. He just starts running with it through the desert. I'm like, what is this guy's gnarly? Like, it was good. Well, you haven't seen this side of it, but when he <laughs> came running into the pit, we actually have a video really? <laughs> to show you, Mr. Brian What's Deegan. <laughs> Hope we, get your soon. we got your gas, man. Uh, I ain't carrying that big one. You got a ratchet strap I can put on my back? Yeah, that's not the only one. How do you, how do you guys do it? I go there? around here, go around his waist. And then come around to his shoulder. Does that make sense? Around his waist. No, uh, we don't have front brakes either when we get in here, guys. Okay. Waist, I couldn't go see go any. Go I couldn't see any leaks anywhere. Okay. But uh, the rest of the is empty. Okay. You gotta go over my shoulders, or it's yeah, we're going to. You're about to push me over my face. Even. Oh shit. So we weren't using fuel. How long did you sit idling at the start? <laughs> Not. We Jesus. don't I paid attention and, to that. Uh, any any tire look like it's leaning out? No, we're good. Huh? Terry, how's that feel, bro? That's fine. Is that gonna kill you? It's probably gonna be fun. See you guys. So I'm we're, here, hey, we're like fifty yards on the left. How I'm far like back three, is he? I'm like three miles that way. Okay, we'll wait. Yeah. Hey guys, that doesn't work. It's not gonna work. Well that didn't fing work. Brian, one of the things we've enjoyed talking with a lot of people about here is you yourself have had so much experience in such a wide variety of motorsports, two wheels and four. Yet here you are as one of the guys who really set the bar for action sports. Here is something that is really gnarly. On the gnarly scale, if you will, where do you put King of the Hammers? I, to be honest, I, I would come out here as a fan to watch like the last few years and I just knew it was a huge commitment to to do this race. So I've been so busy with the kids racing and everything. I was like, I don't know if I want to have the time. But then I was like, you know what, Can-Am, uh, I've been a great relationship with them. They said, come out and be a part of it. And I went out and, and jumped into it. I'm like, dude, this is really gnarly. Like, it's just not gnarly. Like, oh, I'm just going to go for a drive. It's like a four hour race through, through terrain that I can't even believe you can go through. Yeah. And stuff goes wrong. Like when you're beating on cars that bad for that amount of time, stuff's gonna go wrong. And it's, it's like, how do you handle that? Most racing I do is like 20, 30 minutes long main event, yeah, right. you know, moto or, or a short course. And, and uh, if something breaks, you just, you're done. Your race is over, right? This is, you break, it's not over. Like we ran out of gas and we got the car going. We're 30 minutes down and then we got back in the race eventually. And it was like, okay, there's a, just a lot of emotion, a lot of high, highs and lows. And overall, as far as like being a gnarly event, it's it's ranked way up there for me. You know, freestyle motocross, okay, that's always been super gnarly, right? Because yeah. of the risk of injury. But this is more of a long race of attrition, you know? And you have to think, there's a lot of thought process that goes into it. So like, I'm super wore out after the race and i'm just like stoked i finished that was like my goal and i did a lot of people were like you're not gonna finish the race like like a lot of people said that like on the internet there was like everyone's like you're dude you're not i'm like no i'm gonna finish the race dude and it yeah. became this big battle and i'm like that's all i could think of like when we were broke i'm like 
I'm not finishing the race. And I was so bummed. Anyway, it was it was a cool experience and I'll be back. But now I, now I know a little more about it and I know how to prepare a little better. So, but yeah, I, I was an awesome car and it was fun. Well, congratulations yeah. on the win today. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We are going to come right back here to Hammertown. We've got a lot more and a lot more guests to join us. So stay with us right here on Speed Sport Live from Hammertown. And you get to see uh, Pennywise, Pennywise coming up Saturday. on Saturday. Can't wait for that. Love those guys. And you get to see everything that's to do here in Hammertown. It's one of, if not, the best deals I've seen in motorsports these days for a fan. What amazes me is you, nobody hardly has cell phone service out here, but yet we can get Sublime and Pennywise out here to play for us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get a signal out of the middle of the Mojave <laughs> Desert. Trust me, we've been all, all of us have been trying. Yes. Oh. So we talk about Hammer Town. Well, like any town, there are different suburbs, right? Well, here, of course, it's called Hammer Burbs. <laughs> and Dave Arnold went to find out what's it like living in the burbs around Hammer Town. Welcome to Hammertown, USA, right here at King of the Hammers, guys. Well, the lines are stacking up. They're getting ready for the big races, the Everyman Challenge race tomorrow. The Hammer Trucks, the 4400s, will be racing on Saturday. The line is crazy. Now it's all about finding your community out there. Are you in the Hammer Burbs? Are you going to be in Hammertown? Well, I don't know. It's pretty filled up. You got Hammertown Heights. Where are you going to pick? Are you just going to be somewhere out there starting your own sub development? So, Check it out as this place fills up. Well, now we're up on the hill overlooking Hammertown. You can see all the communities that have popped up. We like to call them the Hammer Burbs. Hammertown Heights, we've got Golden Acres, we've got Fun City, we even got the volunteers, got their own little town called Volville, all making up this great community here at King of the Hammers. Well, we've moved to the other side of Stonehenge here in the fire pit and hooked up over with uh, Amber Hannah Turner. How you doing, Amber? You're hanging out here in uh, Hammertown Heights. What's going on? This is our usual campsite every year. We're right above Hammertown Heights and outside of the gated community. So we're not really that bougie of a neighborhood, but we're not quite the ghetto. But it's great up here. We've got great weather. The wind blows that direction, so all the dust stays off of us. And it's just a beautiful day in the desert. Well, I know I could see this uh, little machine behind us right here, and I guess you're going to be competing in the EMC, the Everyman Challenge, uh, tomorrow. Yes, so today I've got Tech and Contingency. This is my 1988 Suzuki Samurai. I've had this thing since I graduated high school, um, and we're taking on the Everyman Challenge tomorrow. 
You ever done it before? Yep, this will be my third year competing. Class A, or you have a, an overlanding rig with a pop-up tent and, and a big old solar panel. Here in the center of Hammertown Heights, it's really nice to, to come together at nighttime with a big bonfire and the smudge pots and uh, just talk about the stories of the day and, and the wheeling stories. Uh, it's been really, really cool and fun and I look forward to coming back for years uh, afterwards. Well, just a little bit of insight what goes on here at Hammertown Heights. It's a little bit about the lifestyle here, and it's always fun hanging out with your friends, making new friends, and uh, your family. Back to you, Ralph and Pam. A look at all the different communities around here at Hammertown as the party is underway here in the middle around the campfire tonight. Hope folks at home are nice and warm because we're not here. Bob Bauer, Hall of Famer here in the off-road world, joins us along with his signature gnome. That goes everywhere with you, doesn't it? It does indeed. Yeah. Um, this is your first time, as hard as it is to believe, here at King of the Hammers. And yours too. Mine too, but you're the off-road legend. Yeah, so it's okay if you're confused. Right. <laughs> but I tell you, I'm as lost as last year's Easter egg when I try and figure out this number system. I just don't know how it works. What did you think when you got, because like me, I'm sure you've seen lots of pictures and read stories yeah, and seen yeah. video and all that, but here you are. What's your take? My take is that, uh, first, this is not an off-road racing crowd. These are four-wheelers, legitimate recreational four-wheelers. They as far as the fan base. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. You see dogs. You see uh, wagons with kids. You see folding chairs. You know what you don't see? Trash. Yeah. These people are taking such good care of the 96,000 acres that we're in on this BLM land, and it's it makes me proud. Yeah, that's that's very true because people are taking lots of stuff with them all around to the different locations to watch from, yeah. but when they leave, it's the way it was when they got there. Yeah. The other part of what I think is it's like, they call it a race. I'm not sure, I'm ready to call it a festival. I mean, it truly is. So many disciplines all coming in at one time over a week. Not only do they get to do it under between the green and checkered, but when that's all done, they go back out and do it for fun. Yeah, for me, when I think about it, from what I've seen going around and everything, it's kind of like the off-road version of Bike Week in Daytona. Yeah. There's a little bit of everything going on from all yeah, the yeah. manufacturers here and around Hammertown, all the things to see here, all the little parties going on everywhere, people just out exploring, and there's a race going on at the same time. You know, they say racing is racing. That's an easy cliche to mm -hmm. throw on out there. And, and because most of the audience for speed sport is compared to the desert, is NASCAR oriented. Good luck is, so am I. <laughs> and you know, when I say racing is racing, there's a difference between what we're doing here and what they're gonna do in the Coliseum this weekend. Here, we have takeoffs and landings, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> that you do, and hopefully safe landings, right? You, you would hope so, but As Evil Knievel would say, happy landings, right? Yeah, happy landings, exactly right. And, and some of the film and the footage we've seen, it's like, Man, oh man, that was like the best save ever. There's a video clip floating around on the internet from earlier today of Lauren Healy on his qualifying lap. Oh. Maybe it was from yesterday. Yeah, it was. Launching his Bronco off of a, a ledge. Yeah. And I bet you he dropped easily 25 to 30 feet. You, you're not exaggerating. With Pe the gas people on. People should know that. With He's the gas on. He was, I mean, he's on it. He just sent it. Yeah. And what that truck did landed, settled, and took off, it's just mind-boggling. Well, I think the truck is still probably very surprised. <laughs> but it's incredible they can build a vehicle yeah. to do that, take that kind of pounding, and perform like that. Yes. And he was only fourth quick, right? That wasn't yes. even the quickest time. No, no. And that's a relatively stock Bronco, the, of the new Bronco. Yeah. This is, like, amazing. Yeah, it's it's incredible what that, that truck did. It really is. So... Yeah. You supposedly retired from racing. <laughs> well, yes. But here you are, and you've seen it. Would you come run King of the Hammers now? Come out of retirement for that? No. <laughs> but but it's not because of the hammers or because of the stuff. It's because I got out after 30, 29 years in the cockpit without drop. I didn't lose a drop of blood. Right. I never broke a bone. I got yeah. one orthopedic massage after a mint 400. Kind of had to. Yeah. But... I just don't want to get back in the car because I got to take myself out of out of race. And yeah. I quit on the right time. It was like I said, if, it was the 2017 50th Baja 1000, 
And I said, Bauer, if you could cross the finish line in La Paz, drive in first place at the at the 50th annual when you're 72 years old, that's badass enough. Step away from the race car. Yeah. And I got to call my own shot because otherwise you just don't get the memo. Right. And so you I'm did it even guy. better than Tom Brady. Well, I right? did. Yeah, there, <laughs> but no one cared. <laughs> Well, he is a Hall of Fame off-road legend. Thanks for coming by, Bob. It's certainly a pleasure Appreciate to see you, Ralph, after 26 years since we've been working together. My That's gosh! Right. That's great. It's great to have the legend here at Hammertown, taking everything in here at the King of the Hammers. We're coming right back. we got a lot more for you. Stay with us here with Speed Sport, live from... having a great time around the campfire that's right behind our set you guys having a good time over there that's veronica weitzel right Finishers there just right came behind through. us too just coming through they're still racing out in the middle of the desert here well a lot of these fans might be thinking you know i might want to go out there and try this someday and you know what you can it's called the ever just outside of Hammertown at the King of the Hammers. And as Pam said, the McNamara brothers, Brian and Sean, joining us. Thanks for coming by, guys. Yeah, thanks tell for us, having us. Tell us a little bit about the Everyman Challenge and what the vehicle is like. So uh, we race in the 4600 class, which would be the stock stock class. And we're limited on motor. It has to be a production motor. Uh, we're allowed to you know build if we want. But 35-inch uh, DOT tires, 12-inch travel max, uh, and it's got to be a stock body, no modifications to the body other than safety requirements. And uh, we come out and put our hearts in it and try and race the same course that all these unlimited and big guys are racing on. And that unlimited means not only unlimited vehicle, but unlimited budget is usually how that goes with racers, right? Oh, yeah. So we actually, our first year, we came out here with a... <laughs> but it, there's a limit to where you can go with that, I would assume, in that category. So 4,600, not really. 4,600, while it is the everyman class and it, the most limited class out here, and you can be out here and you can be competitive with a $10,000 car, you can spend as much as on a 4,600 production car as a 4,400 car if you wanted. It. It's it's actually truly amazing the uh, the spread of what you can get into an EMC between the the bottom of the class and still competitive at 10,000 and the top of the class and just as competitive with hundreds of thousands. So what makes the difference then? Is it your navigation around the course as opposed to the? I, I think the biggest difference is is experience, the willpower, and then the co-driver and driver dynamic there, there's a huge dynamic that has to happen to make it a successful day in any class and i think even more so in the stock class you know we're the, almost the smallest tires out here utvs are running bigger tires than we are <laughs> so it's it, it makes a deal you know to have this relationship and get it through the course horsepower 
comes to play a lot too. You can spend a lot of money on your motor, um, and obviously anything with a Chevy platform is going to have an LS, and that you know they're going to spend five thousand dollars on a motor and have three four hundred horsepower, whereas the Jeep inline six we can spend five thousand dollars and have. 350 horsepower so there's a big difference in the horsepower there but like sean was saying there's a big uh thing that comes out to be you know with the, the teamwork and everything that comes with the emc as well it's all about how well your team works together in and out of the garage <laughs> uh, we've been we've, we're twin brothers we've been together working together for 30 years now and 32 actually and um it's just phenomenal because I can just anticipate anything he's got going on. He can anticipate anything I've got going on, which makes it really fun for the EMC. I mean, it's just a great teamwork for everything we do. So teamwork makes the dream work. Do you guys switch off driving and co-driving, or is there one particular driver for We you have guys? found out that Brian cannot spot me in the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> or I can't drive the rocks, but I, I think he just can't spot. So uh, I take care of the desert, and we, we blast through the desert section with me in the driver's seat, and then we switch as soon as you get back to Maine, and he takes over for the rock section. I do have to hit on teamwork makes the dream work because it's not just in-car teamwork makes the dream work. EMC is all about the teammates you have on course. And it's not, for us, we have uh, some other For example, in NASCAR, teammates might work, hook up and draft together. What do you guys do here teammate-wise with other competitors? We stack rocks together. <laughs> we, you know, we're in a traffic jam and three or four co-drivers will get out and they're all together stacking the rocks. You know, we're pulling parts from pits to pits with each other. You know, somebody, uh, when Josh Atterbury finished uh, second three years ago, uh, we finished just behind him, just out of time in fourth, or just out of the podium in fourth, and we worked through Aftershock, and Josh didn't have rear wheel drive, and we didn't have front wheel drive. So we hooked our winches together, <laughs> and we pulled and pushed each other all the way through that trail, and Josh hit the podium in a two-wheel drive vehicle. I, I mean, say, it's, our, it's really incredible. our first working together with another team is, uh, we were going through Jack North, and there were five or six legends and mod cars all bound up in the easy line. And we got two or three stock car drivers, and we stacked rocks in the hard Ultra Four line, and we drove past seven or eight cars and passed wow. all these. And they're like, "How'd you guys do that?" I'm like, "You guys are fighting of who gets the line." And they're they're fighting who gets to go first and honking their horns and wanting to get out of the way, whereas we get all of our co-drivers together and like, "Let's go stack rocks." Like, <laughs> there's been numerous years when back has been a situation or a race that we had to race, and we've never actually done it. But it's the team, the group, always gets together and is like, "All right, who wants to go stack rocks at the bottom of back door?" So that the 4,600 cars aren't going to land on their lids on the, on the bottom of it. So if I recall, you guys are from Ridgecrest, California. Very local I to here. I know that area very well, the wagon wheel area. Yes, yes. I know there's lots of rocks there. Have you guys gone out there and practiced rocks instead of coming all the way down here to Hammertown? When we were young, we did. Before we ever got into racing, that's where we got all of our, race, our rock experience, skills experience right. okay. was, was around there. But... There's a lot of buggy lines out there, and we like to keep the bodies on the race car and our straight. personal rig straight. And so we actually don't spend a lot of time in the Ridgecrest Rocks. We actually do travel down here and run okay. run the trails down here. It's so local. It's so easy. And then when it, it's as big as KOH, it's nice to be able to know we ran those trails and we've seen them before we come out and race. Right. So. If somebody at home is watching this and is thinking, every man challenge, well, I'd like to try that, how would you suggest they get started? Come help a team. Come volunteer. Get out of here first and see. Like... There's a lot of people who want to come race and they don't they don't know how to get into it or you don't even know if you're gonna like it. You could build a car, show up to race, and you hate it. So I suggest you come out here, volunteer, see the race, see what it's about, see that you like the weather. Uh, I, I and where Sean's hitting is I would volunteer. I would volunteer with Ultra Four first so you see everything and then know that you're hooked with it and then come ask a team, especially the forty six hundred. Nobody's gonna turn you away. Yeah, we, we, can, we don't have enough use, help as it is. It you takes can always a find help in the pits or you know, running a remote pit or running tires. You can and then from there you're just gonna get the hands on help with the course and the car and then but as far as actually getting into it, if you already know you love it, buy a car, run with it, you know. Yeah, buy we, a stock car. <laughs> a Jeep Cherokee will run you $5,000 in really good shape right now. 
our first year we had 300,000 miles on that motor and that's actually the same motor in his wife's car. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, that car finished every mile of that race and it's out here again. So, you know, you don't have to, like we, we touched, you don't have to have a million dollars to come out and do this. Yeah, there's, there's have a blast. Toyotas with 22 RE four cylinders and it won last year, right? I, mean, I think a Lee Springs won the last three years in a row, a full, full yeah, Lee Spring yeah. vehicle. You don't it's have to have. It's almost a run what you brung class. And as long as you meet your safety requirements, get out here and run it. Have, have a great time. Have, have a, a great time. time. Well, best of luck to you, fellas. Good luck tomorrow in the Everyman Challenge. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, you very McNamara much. The brothers, they're going to be out racing here. King of the Hammers tomorrow in the Everyman Challenge. We're coming right back with more Speed Sport live from Hammertown. Everybody, welcome back to Hammertown. And yes, I have my hands in my pockets because I'm doing everything <laughs> I can to stay a little bit warm out here, Pam. It's a little freezing cold out here. At least you're keeping your hands warm. Oh, I have one here. Man, it is something else. So, you know, every racetrack has a safety crew, right? You have an accident on the course, you got to go out, pick it up. Hey guys, I'm over at Backdoor right now, and uh, this is one of the hairy places that they all do a lot of rock crawling up there. It's like a little fall system here. Well, these drivers sometimes run into a little bit of problems out here when they can't get themselves up, they can't winch themselves, they go on their lid, and that's when they bring in the recovery guys. I know it's kind of new for you folks there, watch a lot of the NASCAR stuff. Recovery, definitely needed in rock crawling and desert racing out here. And we're gonna talk to this gentleman here about that. I want you to introduce yourself real quick. My name's Lee Lim. I'm just out here volunteering, helping out. Well, Lee, talk about what you guys do. I know you want to let them try and get themselves out of trouble, but when they can't, you guys step in. Yeah, we step in. We get the rigs set up, winch lines and everything ready. We want to keep the race moving, so whatever we need to do to get them back on their wheels, you know, of course, make sure they're safe beforehand uh, and ready to go. Get them back on their wheels and keep rolling. Not much action to, uh, today for you. The UTVs are out there running, but tomorrow, and Saturday, you're going to be busy. The EMCs, the Everyman Challenge is going to be running out here, as well as the big class, the 4400s. We're going to see them, the King of the Hammers, themselves, the Hammer Trucks. That's right, yeah. It's going to be uh, crazy in here. Rocks being flung out of everywhere, flipped on their lids, uh, cars on top of cars, everything. It's whatever to get, th get through the race, you know, keep rolling. On an average, how many vehicles do you see that get in trouble where they actually need you guys? A lot, a small amount? Oh, it's a lot. Well, just an example, how deep the hole is and how big this wall is. They got to climb up this wall. Yes, climb up this wall. Whether it's they just go for it, pin it to win it, or they're going to have to winch their way up. And hopefully, they won't have to use the recovery, guys. The rescue crew, just one more thing that is very unique to here at King of the Hammers. Well, this guy's not unique to King of the Hammers, Pam. Definitely not. Kyle Cheney, another big winner here today. Congratulations on taking the UTV category. Yeah, thank you. You know, this is uh, our fourth year race in this, and this is our second win. Um, a couple years ago, uh, I ran over myself and broke my foot, and we ended up second. Uh, the first year, we had some radiator fan issues, so we didn't even get a finish. But, uh, you know, this race, just finishing is an accomplishment. I think we actually have video of Kyle running over himself here. But was this two years ago this this happened? Yeah, two years ago. Two and years what ago. happened to you at this moment? Um, I, I got I was actually leading and then I got uh, caught back in the dust behind Hunter and uh, I just went off a little ledge and oh yeah, right there at that oh. broke my foot right there, oh. knocked both my my shoes off and uh, <laughs> we worked so hard to get the car 
uprighted, like I was just watching the car at this moment, hoping it wouldn't flip back over. And then once it stopped, I was so happy. I crawled back to the car because I couldn't walk and uh, ended up getting back in and working our way to the finish line. And we, uh, we lost about 30 minutes there, and uh, we ended up working our way back within two minutes of winning. Wow, that's just incredible. That was crazy. I actually worked in the media tent, and you came in there, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, how did you do that? But up on stage, I mean, it's it, your adrenaline kind of takes over as well. And for you to finish second place after doing what happened, as we just mm. saw, it was amazing. Yeah, but I, I wasn't happy. Um, <laughs> like I said, from that day on, for 365 days, I thought about winning King of Hammers, and uh, that was and we won last year. So it mm -hmm. uh, definitely paid off. And this year, after winning last year, I definitely did didn't push that hard, um, but you know, we didn't like going through and then you came back I can't remember where I saw you come back but you were definitely on a mission today yeah we started seventh and uh, I knew I wanted to get to the rocks first because like I said wh whoever gets to the rocks first controls the race so um, you know if you get stuck in the rocks a lot of times there's only one line so they have, either have to help you out or you know wait for you to get out so um, you know I got to the rocks first I ended up passing everybody in the desert I passed Phil right here in the pits and uh, I took the chance to not fuel. Um, I did all the calculations. I'm like, I think I can make it on fuel. So I didn't fuel, and uh, by not fueling, I was able to pass Phil, which was the last person I needed to pass to get to the rocks first. And it worked. I actually pulled into the pits on fumes. Like when I was going around the short course, my car was dying. Wow. So, okay, so you come back from that crazy injury a couple years ago. You've won it now, what, twice, two years in a row. So what next? Um, you know, we have a lot more racing to do this year, but no, we're going to, well, actually Saturday we got 4,400. We're going to race uh, the UTVs and 4,400. Me, the Millers, and uh, Paul Wolf um, are all going to go to battle with the 4,400s. That's crazy. So you're going to take a UTV and race against the unlimited trucks? Yeah, yeah. It sounds kind of crazy. Yeah, how, what kind of a odds are do you have on that? Do you have any advantage over them? The only advantage we do have is um, in like the tighter rock areas. I feel like we can get through the tight rocks a little better than them, but they have 40 mile an hour on us into the desert. So if we can get through the des desert clean and uh, you know get to the rocks clean with our cars still in 100% top shape, I think we might have a shot at it. Well, best of luck to you, Kyle. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. We'll see how we can do on Saturday in the big event here, Hammertown, King of the Hammers. Let's go ahead and show you the schedule for what's coming up tomorrow here at the 2022 King of the Hammers. The Everyman Challenge, Pam, that we were talking about, that starts at 8 a.m. Yes, and then tomorrow night again at 7 o'clock roughly, we'll be right back here getting to interview whoever our guests are tomorrow. Yeah, and you hopefully know who they a little are. bit warmer. Yes, hopefully it'll be warmer for Just sure. Just a little bit warmer, that would be great. We sure hope you've enjoyed our coverage here, brought to you by Cometic, as Speed Sport is live here at Hammertown, at King of the Hammers 2022. It has been an amazing adventure so far. Uh, Pam, what are you looking forward to the most tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm looking forward to the sunshine, hopefully a little bit of warmer. Yeah, <laughs> should be a great day of racing. Make sure you stay tuned to speedsport.com, speedsport.tv, and ultra4racing.com to watch all the racing action from here at King of the Hammers 2022. For Pam Hall, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long, everybody, and have a great night.